this morning, I'm going to be talking about Thanksgiving. Because Thanksgiving is, I think with the Christians, Thanksgiving is every day. Every day we should be thankful that God has given us another day of life. And uh, that's what I want to talk about. It's going to be from 1 Thessalonians, uh, the fifth, excuse me, the fourth chapter, or the fifth chapter, fifth chapter, I'll get it right here, I got, uh, verse 18. Now, 1 Thessalonians, fifth chapter, verse 18, is a focal verse. And as I got to reading this, I said, you know, I'm going to read from 16 to 22. I want to read all that. So just, uh, if you've got your Bible, follow along with me, please. Starting in verse 16, rejoice always. Pray constantly. Give thanks in everything. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Do not stifle the spirit. Don't despise prophecies. But test all things. Hold on to what is good. Stay away from every kind of evil. Father God, as we open your word here this morning, Lord, I just ask God for a, just a fulfilling of the Holy Spirit to me, Lord, that I can declare your word with the power and authority that only comes from you, God. And I thank you, Lord, for your written word. I thank you, God, for the Bible, Lord, and I thank you, God, that we can go to you anywhere, anytime, and talk with you. Lord, you're always there to listen. Father, thank you, God. And Lord, thank you for what you tell us in that still, small voice. Lord, thank you, God, for that. And Lord, now just bless this time. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. amen. I'm going to give you some interesting facts about Thanksgiving Day. Now I know that we think Thanksgiving is made for turkey. Like uh, one old boy says to me, he says, you know what you, uh, what you call a, a, a nasty turkey, a bad turkey? This guy says, what's that? He says, dinner. Uh, so I want you to think about this as I read these. Because America is trying to do away with God. They don't want God anywhere to have anything to do with anybody. But I want you to show how it got started and how America was founded on God's Word. Thanksgiving Day is a distinctive day, uh, it's a very distinctive holiday. It doesn't commemorate any battle. We're not celebrating a victory of a battle or anyone's birthday or anniversary. It's simply a day set aside to express our nation's thanks to our nation's God. In 1789, George Washington made the first public Thanksgiving proclamation and it is said in part, by the President of the United States, a proclamation, whereas it is the duty of all nations to acknowledge the providence of Almighty God, to obey His will, and to be grateful for His benefits, and humbly to implore His protection and favor. And whereas both houses of Congress, did you hear that? Both houses of Congress uh, have their, by their joint committee, requested that to be recommended to the people of the United States a day of public thanksgiving and prayer to be observed by acknowledging with grateful hearts that they may signal favors of Almighty God. Now, therefore, I do recommend and assign Thursday, the 26th day of November next, to be devoted by the people of these United States to the service of that great and glorious being who in benefit uh, author uh, of that was good, that was, that is, and uh, that will be. Following this bold tradition, President Bush made the following proclamation concerning Thanksgiving on November 21st, 2008. <coughs> Thanksgiving is a time for families and friends to gather and express gratitude for all that we have been given, the freedoms we enjoy, 
the loved ones uh, who enrich our lives. We recognize that these, all these blessings and uh, life itself cannot, uh, cannot from the hand of man, but from Almighty God. That was just back in 2008. Every Thanksgiving, we remember the story of the pilgrims who came to America in search of religious freedom and a better life. Having arrived in a new world, these earth, uh, early settlers give thanks to the author of life for uh, granting them uh, safe passage to this abundant land and protecting uh, them through a bitter winter. Uh, our nation's first president, George Washington, started as the first Thanksgiving proclamation that it is the duty of all nations to acknowledge the providence of the Almighty God, to obey His will, and to be grateful to His benefits, and humbly to implore His protection and favor. While in the midst of the Civil War, President Abraham Lincoln revived the tradition of proclaiming a day of thanksgiving, asking God to heal our wounds and restore the country. I had the privilege of going aboard the replica of the Mayflower. And when I, I went there, I, I didn't know what to expect. You know, I, I, I've, I've been on ships, and all the, you know, the, they have to offer, you know, the, the, especially the cruise ships, the wonderful meals, the nice rooms you have, and everything. There was no such thing on the Mayflower. It was terrible. They had little quarters they had to, to, to use, you know, no place to really have any privacy. Uh, and just cold and wet because they weren't, they didn't have nice cabins. And I think about that and what those people went through. Because I've been into the, the Plymouth uh, Plantation, they call it, where the Pilgrims uh, replica houses are. Uh, built back up and it's supposed to be a, 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 an exact replica, it's supposed to be. They had horrible living conditions then, even when they were in Plymouth. Uh, and they, they didn't, weren't sure, you know, how to deal with all the Indians. They finally made friends with them. And uh, it was just the price that they paid. And it's just for religious freedom. They could have stayed back in the old world and, you know, and went on, but they were being persecuted for their beliefs. You know what? We kind of tend to forget the freedoms that we have in this country. We kind of tend to forget that we can come to church on Sundays. And you folks out there on the internet, yeah, you can go to churches too. You know, and the doors aren't locked. And there's not chains keeping them shut. They're open and you can come and worship as a congregation. We don't have anybody at the door taking your names and, and all that to persecute you later for, for, for worshiping God. We need to take and remember those freedoms or we might be losing them. I hate to say that. It just really scares me even to think it. But isn't that what the world wants? They don't want God any longer. One president we had, and to his disgrace as far as I'm concerned, said on public television that we no longer are a Christian nation. And he's the president, uh, was the president of the United States. I was, I was, I felt terrible when I heard that. He should have been ashamed of himself. There's been a lot of good men and women dying that we can be here on Sunday mornings. A lot of good women and men that have gone and fought for their country that we can enjoy these freedoms that we have. You know, we talk about, oh yes, salvation is free. But somebody paid the bill. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ on that cross. We were talking this morning in Sunday school class about if Jesus had to rose from the grave, we could all go home, go play golf. You all don't know who I'm jabbing with that, do you? <laughs> but it's just, we need to realize the awesome price that was paid just for, for our forgiveness.
forgiveness of sins. Because we had no way in the world that we could do it on our own. There was nothing we could do to pay that. You can't buy it. You can't work for it. You know, some people think, oh, i got to do this. Or I'm going to lose my salvation. I'm telling you what, I believe this. Once saved, always saved. One said, yeah, you might backslide. The Bible talks about backsliding. But you know what? The Bible says very plainly, raise up a child the way he should go. When he grows old, he will not depart. He'll come back. Are we doing that? Are we, tra are we training our children about the Bible? There was a man once, I forget who it was, asked the question, but he says, is so-and-so a, a Christian? And the man says, ask his wife. He says, I don't know. Ask his wife. How do you act when you're not in church? How do you, how do you get along with people? How do you interact with people when you're not sitting in church or the pastor's not looking at you? Would people think that there's a Christian. Or do you have to wear a sign? I'm a Christian. Or do they can they tell by the way you act? Can they tell by the way you talk? Can they tell by the way you where you go? Can they tell by who you're hanging out with? Some hard questions we have to ask ourselves. Well, today we look back on the beginning of our democracy. Americans recall that we live in a land of many blessings. Oh, we do. I know this country is messed up. There's things going wrong, terribly wrong in it. But you know what? We're still the best nation in the world. Amen? Amen. 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 I'm telling you what. You, you don't like this country. You don't like this country there on the Internet. Move somewhere else. Go live, in, go live in Russia. Go live in Cuba. You'll find out what freedom really means. It's sad. We have people growing up, young people today, they don't have a clue of what this freedom that we enjoy is, or how it came about. It's sad. Well, what every person has a right to live, work, and worship in freedom. Our nation is especially thankful for the brave men and women of our armed forces who protected these rights by setting their uh, own com uh, by uh, setting aside their own comfort and safety. Their courage keeps us free. Their sacrifices makes us grateful, and their character makes us proud. I read a I read a little article where it talked about, yes, I'm, I'm no longer in uniform, but I'm a veteran the rest of my life. We got a lot of men and women in this country that went through a lot, that we could have a lot, that we could have that freedom that we so enjoy. I, talking to people, how their families gather together on Thanksgiving Day, and I think that's wonderful. I think it's wonderful that the families, uh, uh, yeah, Dolly, uh, I remember her name, my wife, Dolly, uh, she, uh, her sons came up uh, and were here. And that was just such a joy just to get together. They had to go back, they couldn't stay till Thanksgiving, they had to go back, but it's just a joy to, to gather together as a family. You know, that same joy I feel when we gather here as a Christian family. Because, folks, this church is a family of believers. We believe in one God. We believe that Jesus was died on the cross, was put in a grave, and in three days rose again. We believe he sits at the right hand of God, making intercessory prayer for us. If you don't believe that, if you have never accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, 
At the end of this service this morning, we will be having an invitation as we close out every one of our services with that invitation. Michael's already primed up, ready to go. Got the Bible. He'll show you in the Bible what it means to be saved. Not his opinion, not my opinion, but what God's Word says about it. Because my opinion and five dollars will get you a cup of coffee at Starbucks. That's it. Americans are also mindful that we need to share our gifts with others, and our nation is moved to compassion. I, I, I look at this time of the year especially, I look at the, the people that, uh, you know, like uh, Israel and, and what they're going through, and the Pakistanians, what they're going through over there, uh, you know, it's just Pakistan. Wait. Palestine. Like Palestine, yeah, Palestinian. Thank you, the Palestinians. Okay. I said Pakistanian, Palestinians. Thank you. And what they're going through, they're suffering. They're dying. Their children are dying. And both sides of that, that fight. It's crazy that people use human beings as shields so they won't get hurt. You know, I've got a shield. Amen, Jesus. Amen brother. You've got the same shield. Yes, His name is Jesus. And he died for us. I keep saying that over and over every Sunday. And if I don't, fire me and send me home. I don't deserve to be behind this pulpit if I don't tell you about Jesus. and what he did for us. And we're getting ready to celebrate his birth. And we think, oh, that cute little baby. I love little babies, I really do. I had a couple of them, uh, uh, Dolly's uh, new uh, great-granddaughter came up. And, no, granddaughter. Yeah, not great, but she was great, little girl. And I just had more fun playing. We played peekaboo, I think I told you all last Sunday morning. We played peekaboo at the breakfast table, and I had a ball with her. And you know, and I know Steve and Heather and they have their granddaughter, they, they always post pictures of her, yeah. you know. And, and they, well, I'll tell you one thing, it used to be if you come up to a grandparent and years ago and they wanted to talk about, they'd get their wallet out. How many, what do you have? Five, six pictures? Now they get their phone out and you can be there half a day. You know, 2,000 pictures on her phone. Oh, no, oh yes, there is, there is. Pulling his ear. Oh, look at this pinching his nose. Oh, look, you know, all and on and on and on. We're so quick to talk about him. And then, you know, it's how much we love him. Don't get your phone out, Heather. <laughs> but when you think about it, shouldn't we be that quick to talk about Jesus? Didn't I challenge you all last week? So, you know, to invite somebody to church, huh? to tell somebody, you know, that Jesus loves them and invite them to church. I want you to know that's, uh, that challenge is still going on. Now, I invited probably 18 or 19 people last week, but I cheated. I did it at Bay County Council on Aging. <laughs> you got to tell you the truth. Yeah. Yes. And they all smiled, nodded, but, oh, well, I'll keep asking. Don't keep asking. Keep on, keep on. Keep on keeping on. All right? But, you know, now therefore, I, George W. Bush, President of the United States of America, by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Constitution and the laws of the United States, do hereby proclaim November 27, 2008, as a National Day of Thanksgiving. I encourage all Americans to gather together in their homes and places of worship with family, friends, and loved ones to strengthen the ties that bind us and give thanks to the freedoms and many blessings we enjoy. Do you sit around the Thanksgiving table? And this, this next year, this is what you need to do. When you're sitting around the Thanksgiving table and the family's there sitting, 
Ask him, I want you to name one blessing that we have as Americans. One blessing. And see how many can come up with a good ballot blessing. What do you love about this country? The roads, the freedom to worship, the food we have to eat. I told you all before when growing up, when I grew up, grew up poor. Didn't always have what I wanted to eat, but always I had food. You know, and I, I think I told you all about the time we, we got down to where we all the money we had, we bought a hundred pound sack of potatoes. They used to sell them on the highway and the roads up in Michigan, the farmers went by themselves. So they, sell them. they didn't have farmers markets to go to. They bought a hundred pounds of potatoes and we had powdered milk that we got from the uh, government surplus. And we lived on potato soup. Potato soup. And you know what the funny part about it? I love potato soup. <laughs> I still do. Man, I enjoy it. But that's all we had. We didn't have hamburgers. We didn't have uh, hot dogs. That was a luxury. But when times got hard up there, and, and you know, man, it's, it got rough. It got rough. But God still provided. Amen. Okay? We didn't have a new car to drive, but we had a car to drive. Couldn't afford a gas for it, but we had a car to drive. At the time, the gas was like 25 cents a gallon. Yeah. But you know, we're still the richest nation in the world. Oh, I've only got three TV sets in my house. There's some people who don't even have a house. But God blesses us. We have got so much to be thankful for. Good friends, good family. Well, some of them are. But it's just amazing. How we forget so much. You know, I wanted a new car and you bought me a used one. Um. I was lucky I had a bicycle. We just forget. How quickly we forget. Yeah. It is so that the week of the 27th of November our nation will pause once again to give thanks and one would think that with the example of our forefathers, and because we have so much, that we would, have, uh, would be thankful people. But oh, we forget. We forget so quickly. I think we, that should be our title of, the, of our nation, a forgetful nation. Yeah, a forgetful nation. Well, I guess I better get out of my sermon. It's getting no time. So, as a people of God, we are to give thanks to God and everything. And that's where I, I read there in, in verse, uh, what is it, 18. Give thanks in everything. Okay? Now that doesn't say when the good times are rolling and we're in the dough, you know, give thanks to God for what all that he blessed us with all this money. Or does it say everything? Paul wrote in his Bible, it says, whether I'm a base, whether I'm a broke, I'm going to put it in today's vernacular, whether I'm broke or I'm in the chips, whether I'm in the money, I give thanks to God. Give thanks to God. Yeah. And for, for why, why do we do this? Because it's, it's God's will. It's God's will. It says right there, I'm reading from the Bible, I'm not making this up. But then it says this, for you in Christ Jesus. For you that are in Christ Jesus. Or for you to have Christ Jesus in you. We're never alone. We're not forsaken. He's always there for us. In the good times, the bad times, all the time, He's there with us. He's there with us.
Please remember that. And always be thankful. Always be thankful. I've seen some very ungrateful people in my life. And they should be ashamed. They should be ashamed. Bow with me, please. Father God, as we come to the close of this service, Lord, and Father, I just want to, I want you, Father, just to help us to give thanks amongst our families. For us to give thanks amongst God's families, amongst your family. Give thanks for all humanity, Lord. We know that there's some bad people out there, but we're still to pray for them. We know we got bad politicians in Washington, but we're still to pray for them. God, we know we got some neighbors that we don't really like, but we're to pray for them. Lord, I don't know why. I don't know the whole picture, but you do. You know the beginning and the end. Thank you for that. And God, if there be someone here this morning, again, Lord, that has not accepted you, I pray, Lord, that they would make that decision before they leave here today, that they would not take the chance on going home without knowing you as Lord and Savior. God, maybe there's somebody here that needs a touch from you, whether it be a healing touch, Lord, or financial, spiritual, or mental, whatever it is, Lord. God, I just pray, Father, that they would not leave here without having a prayer for you. God, thank you for what you're going to do. Thank you for what you've been doing here. Lord, in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 If you're able, will you please stand for the invitation?